uh, and removing a lot of the inventory risk and the shelf space problem that has been a, a, a challenge to traditional game world. Um, the electronic aftermarket, DLC, downloadable content, 20 million map packs for uh, Call of Duty at $15. You know, that wouldn't have been dreamed of 10 years ago. So maybe these games that cost so much to make have to have a way to develop an aftermarket, a longer life than the first 90 days, uh, in the same way that there's a library value to movies and, and uh, ways to refresh them with the money side. Advertising been talked about a lot, but it's appearing more and more. In-game advertising is now projected to pass a million, a billion dollars next year, and uh, there's been some rationalization and consolidation, but uh, lessons have been learned, and there is progress being made and money being earned, and new and better ways to do that will no doubt progress. User data. Uh, a gold mine of sorts, uh, the fact that games are connected, people are playing online, it's not hard to find out who they are, what they're doing, how long, on what level, what they go back to. Uh, overlapping their demographics with advertisers' de desire to reach them with a proposition or even the publisher's desire to make the game better. Uh, unlimited sources for the end user to get instant scoop on what's new and cool. Twitter, Facebook, um, SMS, these are all phenomena that we didn't have in uh, the 90s and the first five years of the new decade. So what do we do? Well, adapt new economics to traditional games from new sectors. Maybe we have to start writing and selling by the level instead of by 80 hours of gameplay for which 80% of the people don't play more than 10. A lot of the greatest programming in uh, 20 year history of the industry is ended up on the cutting room floor because most players never got to see the great work in the last five levels. Uh, we have to have a distribu digital distribution angle somehow on almost everything. Uh, we have a presentation tomorrow from uh, Chris Anderson of GameStreamer who's gonna cover some of the new developments in the uh, digital distribution era, which we all know, Steam and the talk about on live, etc. But uh, it's definitely making major uh, inroads. Maximize ancillary income through expansion packs, DLC, possibly merchandising, uh, subscriptions to magazines or fan clubs or something. Cater to multi-screen access. Uh, a lot of games being played on iPhone, iTouch, and now iPad. And soon, or already, uh, as you'll hear from, uh, from Igor later, on Android platforms. But I think there's still a long way to go for games that can be played some of the time on the big TV and some of the time on the bus. And uh, there are bits and pieces of that happening, but it might get a lot bigger, I think, especially with MMOs. Uh, you have to have a Facebook plan and you have to have a YouTube plan if you are going to be spending more money on game development and can't invest as much as you used to in game uh, marketing. In fact, you have to have a lot of new plans, I predict. Uh, in fact, we even reassess uh, platform strategy. Uh, I think, first of all, the biggest growth other than the Facebook phenomenons like uh, you know, Pet Society and Farm Bill, having the iPhone games, which will now become iPad games, and, uh, you know, ignore these formats at your peril. I call a G plan, which is basically Google Android phone, Google pads. There'll be a lot of companies competing to make Google pads, and only one company that makes an iPad, which means that at some point Google pads will be cheaper than iPads, and we know what uh, VHS did to Betamax. Uh, end plan. The, there were 36 million netbooks sold in the US last year. The biggest console, if you want to call it a console, it certainly can be played, games can be played, and they're connected. So, you know, it's a phenomenon going on in the computer industry, a lot different than the old uh, desktop scenario. 
Uh, definitely need a D plan, digital distribution, and maybe even a B plan, a book plan, because you know there are now more software copies of uh, books being sold than hardback copies already, and the e-books are out. What two years? There's probably going to be some mudroom games or the equivalent that appear on even text basis. So you never know. Um, is there an exclusivity play? All platform owners worry about having exclusive content that helps build their platforms. Maybe if you can, you know, have a chat with the platform that you think is going to be helpful, you might get some uh, help with the cost of your game in return for a period of exclusivity. Uh, you've got to build in new wow factors that weren't there before. You're going to hear from Ray right after me about 3D. An amazing new frontier, really makes some games dance uh, and totally compelling on the right product made with the right programming. Uh, new input freedoms. We have had cameras and microphones, uh, but uh, voice recognition has still been a bit elusive. It's coming along though, and I'm sure someone will do a game with voice input only, and it will do well. Massively collaborative problem solving. There was just a game that was put out by the University of Washington involved uh, trying to sort out an extremely complex issue relative to DNA or some kind of protein folding. They had 57,000 players or 36 million solutions. They made a leaderboard for the people that contributed and this was just a general you know, goodwill pro bono kind of thing, but there's no reason that you couldn't have games that have Collective problem solving. Maybe you have Liverpool against uh, <coughs> against uh, Newcastle, in all kinds of ways to cut, slice, and dice where the contributors came from and get points for their for their flag. Uh, you have to be really original. Uh, that's always been the case, but now with the economics being so tough, if you're going to break through and get one of those 30 slots, that the game will sell a million copies. Uh, at launch uh, in the U.S. market or two to three million worldwide, you have to be really different. And I think Red Dead Revolution is an example of something like that. We have some others coming along. Some you'll see at the uh, screenings. Avoid annoying tactics and treat users with respect. I don't know about you, but uh, try to learn this a little bit about these Facebook games. I went on Club, uh, Club Penguin in Farmville for a while and it, it, it's like a nightmare. Every two seconds something pops up. You'd do a lot better if you'd pay for this or that, you know, and, and little kids on, on Club Penguin, they look so stupid if they don't have, you know, they look like the emperor's new, new clothes unless they paid money to get this or that. So, well, that's fine and people are spending money to do it, but I think in the long run, this will cap out and uh, People do have money and they'll spend it when transactions can be made frictionless, but please don't be annoying. It's not good for the industry. So, uh, and consistent with the times, <laughs> keep the burn rate low. We're in a recession, you know, and uh, that sometimes becomes a fact of life after the fact, but if you keep it in mind as you watch the costs uh, on a monthly basis, you may avoid the other kind uh, of uh, cost control, which is much more distracting, painful, and unproductive. So without further ado, I am going to bring to the stage Mr. Ray McGuire from Sony, PlayStation, Northern Europe, <coughs> Scandinavia, Iceland, uh, Malta, uh, Cyprus, and the Benelux. Uh, welcome, Ray.